Jonathan Sasha Dotti is a journalist and broadcaster. I want to talk about Israel, if I can, and Keir Starmer. Jonathan, welcome to Talk Drive. How are you? Hi, Jeremy. I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm good. We've, what, we've talked before, and I really appreciate you being on. Um, can you just explain from uh, an Israeli Jewish point of view the response to what David Lammy did the other day. I was driving in London today and I drove past the American Embassy and there were the usual students back from Mallorca with Mummy and Daddy with their free Palestine T-shirts. I was very vocal when October the 7th happened. I don't like what I see in Gaza. I don't believe that Netanyahu has, if you like, the best interests long term. But I will not get away from the fact that Hamas is a terrorist organisation and needs to be taken out. Um, the other day, David Lammy, I thought it was gesture politics, pal. 350 arms export licenses. He decided to get rid of 30. To me, that's just to appease a certain part of his party. What was your response? I spend a lot of time in Israel. I'm back and forth from there for reporting. And I can tell you that this has been met with incredulity in Israel. Britain supplies arms to Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt. They all receive British weapons. But on the same day that Israel was burying some of those six hostages, all of whom had been shot in the back of the head at close range some multiple times, that's when David Lammy and Sir Keir Starmer decided it should be announced that Britain was suspending 30 out of 350 arms export licenses to Israel, including components for military aircraft, helicopters and drones. And they said that it was because there's a clear risk that UK arms might be used in serious violation of international humanitarian law. That is just absolutely not true. There is no such judgment. In fact, Lamy also said that Britain is not saying that Israel has broken those laws. In fact, he said very pointedly that they're not making a comment on whether that's happened. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu, who's actually giving a press conference now, a lengthy press conference as we speak in English to the world media, has described this British partial embargo as shameful. And he said that it will embolden Hamas. And I think that is precisely correct, because the timing and also just the facts of what this government has done now show that Britain is going soft on Hamas and it's going tough on Israel when Israel is fighting an absolutely justified war against an enemy which did something unspeakable and horrific and which would do it again. It has declared it would do it again. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, whether individuals like him or not, is fighting this war much in the same way as most Israeli leaders would. There are some debates over his negotiating tactics in the negotiations to try and free hostages. Let's not forget who took those hostages. Let's I, not forget I how they're being treated. I couldn't agree more. And I listen, I'm not a, a massive fan of Netanyahu. I think we were all brought up to believe it was a two-state system, and then he sort of trashed that straight away, didn't he? But but I, I, I'm a bit old-fashioned, Jonathan. I, I don't actually believe he should negotiate with terrorists. And I think you're absolutely right when you say uh, the other day uh, about Lamy. So badly thought through, I think, badly advised, just maybe just bad, uh, at that exact moment, minutes, hours after the, you know, the IDF forces well, were heading towards saving those hostages, uh, Hamas knew they were coming, they did what they did on the 7th of October, they shot innocent people in the back of the head. This terrorist organisation, which let's not forget, is funded by, by Iran, which is exactly like the Houthis, which is like Hezbollah, the axis that I talk about every day on the show of Russia, China and Iran, if this continues, right, I, I get, in fact, let me ask you, I get all sorts of activists and bedwetters saying to me, it's terrible what's happening in Gaza. Yes, it is. I'm not old enough quite, but what happened to the world when we were ridding the world of the ideology of Nazism? Because to me, Hamas, that sort of organisation needs to be destroyed, finished, ended. It, it is horrible to watch what's happening in Gaza because wars are horrible. Uh, the reason that war is, is happening in Gaza is because Palestinian terrorists, including many civilians from Gaza, crossed over the border into Israel to kidnap, kill, rape, pillage. Uh, those people are now caught up in a long protracted war and it's worse for the civilians of Gaza because of Hamas's strategy. Hamas embeds itself not just in civilian areas but literally in tunnels under civilian homes and civilian facilities. There have been many documented examples of Hamas using schools, UNRWA facilities, UN facilities, hospitals, mosques, 
as military bases from which they've launched attacks, from which they've launched rockets, in which they keep explosives and weapons. Weapons have been found and it's been documented and shown to the international press in homes, in children's mm. bedrooms. Mm. There is no section of Gaza which doesn't have this problem and that is a concerted and deliberate effort on Hamas's part. Hamas has done that completely deliberately. It is impossible for Israel to take out Hamas without there being damage to Gaza precisely because Hamas designed it that way. Hamas is using the citizens of Gaza. It is using Palestinians as human sacrifices so that Israel will have a bad reputation internationally. And I say all this, but I'm going to add that despite all of that, Israel, if you go by the numbers that we're getting from both sides, if you go by the numbers claimed to have been killed by Hamas, and we've got to take those with a massive pinch of salt because they lie, and we go by the numbers that Israel says that it has killed who are terrorists, the ratio of civilians to combatants is extraordinary in comparison to any other urban warfare in the history of the world. Much more successful than Britain and America's efforts and the Allied efforts in recent wars. And I think that that doesn't negate the tragedy of no. innocents dying at all. But it does just underline the fact that in wars, horrible things happen. This war is taking place precisely because Hamas started it, and precisely, as you said, because Iran is sponsoring it. Completely. And precisely because Hamas is not ending it. They have had many opportunities. America said, Blinken said, that Netanyahu had agreed to the bridging deal in the negotiations. They also said that Israel had made very generous offers in the negotiations to try to have a ceasefire and to get the hostages out. It is Hamas who's refused to go along with that. And as you correctly pointed out, just to briefly say, yep. Iran is behind all of this. Of they have they orchestrated what they call a ring of fire of around Israel. The Houthis in the south, in Yemen, in the north, in Lebanon, Hezbollah, in Gaza, they have Hamas and others. This is an effort from Iran to bring the war to Israel Absolutely. and avoid any war on Iranian territory. And it's time that the West, instead of introducing these sorts of partial arms embargoes, did the opposite and got firmly behind Israel as the gatekeeper to the West. Because I what said, Israel is facing now, we will face in the future. I, I will finish by telling you something which I, I take no pleasure in, but I got many messages after Lamy's performance the other day that said that anti-Semitism is alive and well in the Labour Party still. Uh, Jonathan so. Sasha Dotti, really great to have you on. Journalist and broadcaster talking about the situation in Israel.